Hello everybody, this is Edith Macatella. I just finished my doctoral studies at the University of Oulu and I am going to start a postdoc in Germany. My research focuses in studying the conductivity variation of the lower ionosphere, the region, by using the propagation of very low frequency radio waves. These waves are in the frequency range of 3 and 30 kilohertz. BLF waves can propagate long distance inside a natural wave guide formed between the Earth's surface and the lower boundary of the ionosphere. Monitoring the electrical conductivity there. The electron density of the lower ionosphere presents great variability, both spatial and temporal. How can this be useful in scientific research? Well, there is a diversity of physical phenomena that are able to alter significantly the conductivity in the ionosphere. Uh, these phenomena can have their origin at air, for example, lightning activity and atmospheric waves. Uh, they can have also their origin in the solar system, like for example, solar flares, solar eclipses, or even much farther away, like in the case of gamma ray bars. The aim of the present study is to examine nighttime VLF amplitude oscillations on a high latitude subagenospheric VLF propagation path and understand how they, can, they may be related to changes in space weather and atmospheric activity during solar cycle 24. This is a list of the data sets used in this study and also from where the data sets were retrieved. It is accepted that oscillations from solar and terrestrial origin can be induced in the VLF signals. Surprisingly, only a few studies report induced oscillation over long or short time scales. Moreover, even fewer perform formal analysis of the frequency content of VLF signal variation. Silver et al. 2016 applied the long scalar periodogram um, to, record, to, to record the VLF signal that had propagated in low and mid latitudes regions um, to determine the dominant oscillations. And they show it that the most dominant are the annual and the semi annual. Um, Samanes et al. 2018 and Sharmat et al. 2017 also found the same, but for low latitudes and quasi-polar paths. The three reports um, agree that the semi-annual oscillation is the strongest one. On the other hand, uh, Silver and Sharma reported more oscillations than the semi-annual and the annual. Moreover, no explanation, sorry, however, no explanation was suggested for those unexpected uh, oscillations. Regarding the semi-annual oscillation, uh, Silver et al. suggested that were due to nitrogen oxidized transport. From previous reports, it is clear that limited studies have been done using VLF data recorded at high latitude regions where long-term geomagnetic activity might be expected to strongly influence the VLF signals. Therefore, our study consisted in retrieving relevant oscillation and identifying their possible sources. In this study, narrow band VLF data from the 24 kilohertz transmitter called NAA and received in Finland were analyzed. This receiver is part of the ARPAC network and this is a network designed to study radiation bell processes with many high latitude receivers. The thick boxes here are the regions around the VLF propagation path from where atmospheric temperature data were used in order to compare against the observations made on the VLF paths. 
in this study, the NAA amplitude recorded from 2008 till 2018, what you said, the temporal evolution of the amplitude is shown here for an arbitrary day. Uh, the blue boxes are uh, from 22 UT to 2 UT, and they are used to compute the um, daily average. The temporal evolution of those daily average are here. And um, from this plot, it is not possible to observe any obvious oscillation. And for that, we employ a technique that will help us to rebuild that. Now I will present the obtained results and our interpretation. The wavelength technique is a very useful tool that provides information of the temporal variation of the oscillations contained in a time series. Here again is the daily variation of the nighttime amplitude. And here is the global wavelength spectrum, um, which inform us about the relevant oscillation that are indicated by horizontal lines. The dashed line here is the 95% confidence level. This plot is the real part of the wavelet transform in the time period domain. And the contour colors indicate the minimum in white and the maximum in red. And magnitude of the matches between the phases of the wavelet and the time series. The black curve is the cone of influence and the values lower than these should be treated with caution. We can observe that oscill the oscillations undergo changes in amplitude with time and even completely vanish, only to appear sometime later. Uh, the 20, the, sorry, the 14 day period has sporadic occurrences. Um, the broad peak of the 32 day period is also uh, involving the 27 day uh, solar rotation period, which um, appears intermittently uh, here. Um, we consider these two uh, oscillations as solar rotation oscillations. The 86 day period uh, here appears usually high uh, in 2015 only. And then the 80, 80, 182 day period that we treat this as the semi annual oscillation uh, decreases considerably between 2010 and 2014. And finally, the 396-day period uh, show a broad peak, and also involving the 360-day period. However, this periodicity splits into uh, shorter and longer um, periods after 2015. That's uh, why we treat this period as representing the annual oscillation, its solar cycle behavior is complex and worthy of further analysis. To evaluate if two time series are physically related, we employ the cross wavelet and wavelet coherence. The cross wavelet identify the common changes in power, while the wavelet coherence um, is used to measure the uh, degree of correlation. Then, if, two, if the two evaluated time series are physically related, we expect to find both common power and high levels of coherence. Each of these plots uh, present analysis for two time series. VLF data and the evaluated parameters. 
So in this case, we have atmospheric temperature and here nitric oxide and so on. Um, here are the cross wavelet and here the wavelet coherence for atmospheric temperature and for nitric oxide. What um, the contour colors, I mean the black contours are the 95% confidence level and the arrows indicate uh, the relative phase relationships. Those pointing to the right or to the left mean in phase or antiphase. Uh, and then from these figures, we understand the atmospheric parameters do not explain the variation of oscillation observed during nighttime because we don't have, uh, we can have power, but we don't have coherence. The cross wavelet and wavelet coherence here uh, are shown for VLF width, Lyman alpha, uh, VLF width, solar wind, VLF width, AE index, and VLF width, uh, particle precipitation. Uh, as I mentioned, for the cross wavelet and for the wavelet coherence. Um, so here we can see that Lyman alpha can be considered as the dominant driver of nighttime uh, VLF variability on an annual time scales because we have power and we have coherence here. Mm, so these results confirm us that the geochronal Lyman alpha is the main source of ionization uh, for the nighttime neutral nitric oxide. Uh, the increases after 2014 of in the semi-annual oscillation um, could be explained by the uh, semi-annual variation in geomagnetic activity. These differences in the observation before and after 2014 could be connected with the 22-year variation in geomagnetic activity. Um, in the case of the solar rotation, so uh, it seems that uh, they are most clearly linked with Lyman alpha during solar maximum and with the geomagnetic activity during the declining phase of the solar cycle. This may be explained by modulation of the solar wind interaction with the earth magnetic field due to high speed streams, which maximize during the declining phase of the solar cycle. Um, furthermore, high speed streams have the largest relative effect on geomagnetic activity at high latitudes polar paths. Mm. Then, finally, in this study, we have retrieved the important periods that appear in daytime and nighttime VLF radio wave amplitude variability by employing wavelet techniques, the relation of those periods to a selected space weather and atmospheric parameters have been found using cross wavelet and wavelet coherence. This result, a part of our article published in GR in 2019, um, the link to our article is here, and this is my email. Please feel free to write your questions and comments. Thank you. <laughs>